Hi there, welcome to Learning Fastify, part three. In part two, I followed the Fastify Getting Started guide and got a basic API application up and running. In this video, I'm going to build on that and learn how to create my first plugin with the Fastify framework. What we want to do is look at refactoring the code that we have here into a plugin. And if we take a quick look at the docs that Fastify provide for this, this is the getting started documentation that we were using in the last video. And here you'll see this explanation that with Fastify, everything is a plugin. So that's quite an interesting kind of concept in Express. Um, if you're familiar with that as a framework, the one of the big concepts there is everything is middleware. So I don't think it's exactly the same. I don't think it's a one-to-one -one kind of um, like functionality and behavior in, in Fastify with plugins, but it's interesting to see that there's this really kind of core concept that Fastify has around plugins. So let's have a look at how it works. So we can see here they're using this Fastify.register method um, and then requiring in another module and registering it. So, and that module itself has some roots inside of it. So this is kind of similar to what we have right now in our application where we have a root with fastify.get, but it's wrapped in this whole whole bit of code here. Um, and it accepts a fastify object and an options object. So that's kind of interesting. It's a bit different to things that I've seen before with Express. Um, and then we use fastify.register here to actually to actually make Fastify aware that we want to load this particular plugin. So that's quite kind of interesting. I, I expected that plugins would be really specific parts of functionality, but because plugins are such a core concept in Fastify, it seems like it really does apply to everything. Okay, so now we'll have a go at trying to take our current route and put it into a plugin. Let's have a look at what we can do here. So we have our single root, uh, the get root, um, and I think we'll move it into a file called roots.js. Seems like a sensible name for our plugin. And if we take that over here, and let's have a look back at the documentation, see what we need to wrap it with. So we need to wrap it in a function. So this is an async async function roots we can i'm sure name it whatever we want but that works pretty well for what we're doing um and we need to make sure that we export that so module.exports and that should mean that we have our function available um to require over in here so let's bring our roots in that we've just created with require and let's see roots.js great okay so now we have those created um we need to use fastify register um which is the function we saw here so let's have a look um they're actually requiring fastify inside that but um i think it's a bit clearer to require it as a variable so i'm going to leave it like that for now so we'll do fastify register roots um, and let's see how that looks. That looks good to me. Let's see if it's actually working. Let's give it a try on the command line. So yeah, the good news is that no mon's still restarting our server for us. Um, nothing's crashing, it's always a good sign. And we can do curl v localhost 3000. Excellent, so we're still seeing our response come back. So that's already kind of tidied up our main server JS. We don't have any application logic in here, which is nice. There's no kind of routing behavior or any routes to find it is just the kind of the basic setup for our Fastify server to configure it to run. And then this root is now tied, tied away um, over in this file over here. So that kind of seems like the most basic sort of plugin that we can create with Fastify. If we dig in a little bit more, um, here's the Fastify documentation for creating plugins. 
Um, so it goes into a lot more depth around what you can do. Now, you'll notice here that actually the function signature that they mention here has fastify object, the same as we do, um, but it also has options and a done um, callback. So it seems that some of the fastify documentation isn't quite up to date. Um, I mean, this code will absolutely work, but it's the older style of writing um, code in Fastify. With the newer code, if you're using async, as we are, um, you don't need to call the done function, like the done callback. That Fastify automatically knows because this async function um, will return a promise ultimately by default. That's, that's a built-in behavior with async functions in JavaScript. Um, Fastify knows when everything is done, basically. So we don't have to worry about that. That's just something to bear in mind as you're looking at the documentation. If you see done, as long as your function is async, uh, you don't need to worry about accepting or calling that callback. So we'll ignore that for now. And let's take a look at what we can do um, to make this plugin a little bit more interesting. So here in the documentation, you'll see they're mentioning the fastify decorate method. Um, now decorators are a way of customizing um, objects in fastify. So there's the core fastify server instance um, and the decorate method in this case allows us to go and create some kind of useful function. So that seems kind of interesting as a basic way to start trying it out. You can attach functions as it shows here, or we can attach just a plain object with some configuration in, for example. So let's have a look at what we can do with that. If we take this, just this basic kind of template for um, a Fastify decorator and drop it in here. So this is some code. We can kind of tidy it up to the short function syntax. Um, that looks a lot nicer. So we now have this utility and we're just for the sake of argument going to return a really simple thing like um, uh, decorators are super neat. Okay, cool. So we have it returning the string. Not doing anything special at this point. Um, we're just going to see how decorators work. Um, and then once we've got the decorator working, I think we can try and move it into its own plugin. So it's potentially something that we could reuse around our application rather than just in this root section or rather in this root plugin. So let's give that a go. Um, so I think if I remember rightly from the documentation, um, when, if you attach something onto the main Fastify server instance, um, is available inside uh, a root handler with uh, this. So they bound, yeah, there we go. So the decorated Fastify server is bound to this in root handlers. Okay, so we'll jump back to our code and have a look at how we can access our utility, uh, this decorator that we just created. So according to the documentation, we should be able to call this dot utility and that should give us uh, back our string. So let's see if we can add that into uh, the string we're returning here in our JSON object. Um, we'll turn this into a template literal and um, drop our call to this.utility, which should give us this string back. And we should be able to see that come back in our terminal when we make a curl request. So let's give that a go. Now, unfortunately, we've got an error that this dot utility is not a function. Now, when I was testing out this code earlier, I found something in the Fastify documentation about if you are using this in uh, an arrow function, and we've got an arrow function here, uh, the scope is broken. The the whole this is a very kind of magic thing in JavaScript, and um, one of the things that arrow functions have issues with is, is the binding of this scope. So we're gonna have to change this from being an arrow function into being a regular function. And uh, that isn't going to be a problem. Um,
but it's really worth knowing about because that seems like a pretty major gotcha and it had me kind of confused for quite a while. So now we know that that's a thing, let's make everything consistent and change it all to, to regular function definitions. Um, so let's give that another go and see if that's fixed our binding of the this scope. Awesome. So now we see decorators are super neat coming from our utility decorator. Um, and that's, that's a kind of very basic sort of setup there for a decorator. Obviously you'd normally have something a bit more complex where it's potentially calling a database or, um, doing some more kind of heavy lifting. But for now, that's a really nice way of seeing how we can, um, decorate the main fastify object. Now, as a final thing, uh, let's see if we can pull this out into its own um, Fastify plugin that we use here. So with everything being plugins in Fastify, you can have plugins within plugins. So we'll take this decorate utility and we'll just create a utility.js for simplicity's sake. And let's copy this whole block because we're going to need another kind of wrapping piece of code. Now let's strip out our root because we don't need that. But we do want this to be our async function utility. Um, and we'll get rid of the fastified decorate here and replace it with a fastify.register. And um, Let's require our new utility file. Um, let's see. So it's in the same directory as our roots file. And we can then use it down here. So we'll register this utility. And yeah, I think that's all looking good. So we've got now our utility decorator moved into its own separate plugin. Um, we're requiring it here in the roots and then we're registering it so that we can make it available here for this dot utility. Now let's give that a try. See if everything's still working now we split it out. Oh no, this dot utility is not a function again. So um, one of the key things about plugins in Fastify is that they create their own scope. So every time you have a closure like this one, so this function here, that's its own scope. Every time you're doing Fastify or register, it's a new scope. Now this is something that if you're creating plugins, you want to be reusable, like our utility here with the, this decorator. Um, you'll want to be able to make sure that you can use them in different scopes. This root, for example, you don't need to be able to use that anywhere else. You define it once. Um, it's not like you need to reuse that code and reuse that functionality. But for our decorator, we do want it to be available here and potentially in other plugins and other root handler stuff that we have around our application. The way this is handled in uh, Fastify is with FP plugin. So let's take a look at the documentation. Here we go, handling the scope. So the way that Fastify handles scope is uh, with the use of a Fastify plugin module. That's the kind of common approach, is, the, is what they recommend. Um, so we need to pull in the Fastify plugin and then wrap our plugin in that to make it available for the rest of the application. Um, it, or rather to make it available in other scopes. So let's have a look at giving that a go. We need to, first of all, install the Fastify plugin. Um, so we'll install that dependency. And whilst that's installing, oh, that went nice and quickly. Um, so we'll look at how we can use that in our code here. So coming back to our utility plugin, which has uh, our decorator in. We're going to require uh, the Fastify plugin. And um, 
I personally prefer something a little bit more descriptive. So just so we know what we're doing, what FP is, um, if we get stuck in the middle of some kind of other issue, um, it seems good to, to have a clear idea of what we're working with. Um, so now we need to make sure that we wrap this uh, utility function, uh, this plugin. So we're gonna have to separate that out by itself. Um, and then wrap it or pass it into Fastify plugin. Um, cool. So let's see if that matches up to all the documentation says. Yeah. So here they're, mat they're wrapping it in line. So they've got the function passed directly in. Uh, we're defining it here above and then passing it into Fastify plugin. I think it's just a little bit clearer and easier to read. Um, so you can optionally um, pass a version range of Fastify as a parameter to say that um, uh, you can use it with specific versions of Fastify. That seems really nice. At the moment, we're just keeping this simple for our own application. We're not distributing this, so uh, I think we can leave that out. Now let's see if that's fixed our whole um, error that we were seeing before with this dot utility is not a function. Um, cool. Yeah, great. So that's made the decorator that we have, this Fastify plugin uh, utility, with our decorator rather, is now available to any routes that we want or any other plugins um, that we want to define around our application. Um, we've covered quite a bit of ground in this video. Um, plugins are a pretty deep topic, it seems, in Fastify. There's quite a lot to be learning. Um, definitely finding a few quirks with the way things work. Um, but that's all the fun of, of learning something new. Uh, in the next video, we'll move on to trying to make something that's a little bit more useful um, and see how we can actually handle sending custom responses uh, with our own Fastify plugin. See you then. Bye.